everybody. Welcome to another edition of Getting Your Course Done and Out to Market. Today we're talking about free versus paid content and why you should give away your best content for free. I'm Jean on the TV from the Course Creation Boutique. I see Monica's on. Hi, Monica. So I think we're ready to go. So a lot of times I get questions about what should I be putting in my course versus what should I be putting in my free content, my blogs, my podcasts, my videos. So I want to talk to you about today why you should be putting out your best content into your free stuff. And then I'm going to give you three examples of influencers, experts who are giving away amazing things in their free content and how it differentiates between that and their paid content. So let's first talk about why you need to give away your best stuff in your free content. Number one, you're there to build trust, right? You're there to build rapport. So they learn to like, know, and trust you and love you, right? And want to buy from you. So that's number one. Number two, you want to establish authority. So we want to give them your best stuff because you want to show them that you're the expert in it. And then number three, my argument is that your paid content is going to be so different. They're getting something so different from your paid stuff that it's okay to give them the best in your free content. So let's go into those three examples. First of all, I want to talk about a blog and I want to talk about Ashlyn Carter and I got to meet Ashlyn Carter at an event last year and she is just a bundle of energy. She's a copywriter and a consultant. She's amazing. And she has this blog called Ashlyn Writes. And I was looking at her blog last night and one particular blog, and I've got the title here, how to write faster, six hacks to help you write more in less time. Okay. You get a lot of these kind of blogs, right? Like productivity hacks, how to do things in less time. Got it. But what I liked about Ashlyn's blog is that she was so specific and I feel like her six hacks were so good. Like first she talked about the Pomodoro technique and how, uh, to break up your time with that. And then she talked about doing a bad first draft and what it means to do a bad first draft and leave holes and go back and fill those holes. And then she talked about templates and she gave a screenshot of her blog template and that she always starts off with something to model. This blog was so good. I got so much from it as a copywriter myself, as a script writer, that I was like, I'm gonna steal at least three or four things from this blog. It was so rich, it was so good. She didn't hold anything back, right, in this blog. And I was thinking to myself, okay, so what paid content does she have or what does she, how does she make money? So she's got a course, she's got a copywriting course that's closed right now, and then she consults. She does, uh, she does teach you how to do a little DIY, she, teach, she does a done for you. And I'd be willing to bet in her course, instead of showing you screenshots of what the blog template would look like, she gives you the template right? Or she gives you a bunch of templates. So look at free content. You're telling them what to do and a little bit of the how, but in a paid course, you're showing, you're giving templates, you're giving fill, fill out the blank kind of things, right? And then also she's a consultant. So there's going to be custom aspects of uh, what you're paying for versus a blog, which is obviously just static content. So in Ashlyn's case, it doesn't matter that she's giving away that great, great stuff for free because her paid content, what she delivers, what she promises is so different. Okay, so that's one example, Ashlyn writes, and I'll put the links in uh, the notes above. Second example is the amazing Amy Porterfield and her podcast. If you know Amy Porterfield and you know her podcast, you know she over delivers every time. She gives a mini workshop in every single podcast she does so much research and work to get to those podcasts done. It's amazing. So I was just looking at her podcast last night and she did a bonus brainstorm for courses, for example. And she walks through exactly how to figure out what bonuses you need. And then for webinars, she had one recently, three areas where you might be able to find new opportunities in webinars that you may be missing out, for, missing out on, like the Q&A or telling stories up front. And these podcasts are so rich and she just delivers on it because she knows her paid courses, her paid content are so different because you're getting a system. So it's great that I've got these three areas of webinars, for examples, to focus on. But if I want to know how to put my slides together 
or if I want to know email sequences I should use after I hold my webinar, like sales sequences, I need Amy's course on webinars, right? Same thing for courses. Like if I want to figure out how to build my course in a complete system, I need Amy's courses that convert. I'm not going to learn it all from a podcast. I mean, I could spend hours or days or months cobbling together all her podcasts to try to figure out how to put a course together, or I could just spend money on her paid content for a linear system, right? So there's another great example of how your paid content differs from your free content. So again, she's not afraid to put it all out there because she knows her students are getting something so different and yet so valuable in her paid content. Okay, third example. So I gave you guys a blog and a podcast, so I wanted to give you a video example. I stumbled upon Yoga with Adrian last night, and she gives these 30-minute full yoga routines that you can follow along on YouTube. She's amazing. I was, I was like, I'm gonna do some yoga <laughs> with Adrian like later this afternoon. And she just does these 30 minute videos because she knows she can just put it all out there. And then what's her paid content? Her paid content, I was looking around, you can shop, you can buy products, you can buy t-shirts, you can do retreats with her, so events. So she knows that thing's gonna replace that live experience with her. You're gonna pay for that because you're in the moment with her. Um, I don't know, maybe she does coaching with you or she does one-on-one. -on -one. So it's a different experience from that free content that you're getting on YouTube. So she's not afraid to give you entire 30 minute routines to follow along. Again, just like Ashlyn, just like Amy, she's not afraid to put it all out there because she knows she's offering another experience that's paid. So my challenge for you is to one, put your best content out there for free, whether it's a weekly blog or a podcast or a video, whatever it is, put your best stuff out there. And then two, I've said it before and I'm gonna say it again, be consistent. When I was doing research, there were so many videos that like hadn't posted in a couple years or somebody started a blog and then it fell off in September. Guys, be consistent because there's so many people who don't stick with it and, and just fall off. And the more consistent you are, the more you build your tribe. So, and then three, think about how you're gonna differentiate your paid content with customization, with a complete system, with a personal experience, right? So that's a lot of challenges, I'll put it in the notes, but I want you guys to succeed. I want you guys to get your courses out there and get your amazing content out there that's gonna help you sell your course. So that's it for this week, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys next week. Bye for now.